Well, I think most of us like to be the ones giving hope. We don't really like to be on the receiving end, do we? No. Well, maybe I'm alone in that. But I think I hear a lot of people say things like, oh, that was so humbling to have to ask for help. Or, I hate to have to ask you this, but, or, can I have a favor, please? Just makes me feel so bad that I have to ask. Well, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests, I want to tell you tonight a story about a time when I struggled to accept help. I don't know if there's a name for this. Maybe psychologists have a name for someone recovering from being too independent. Mm -hmm. um, but I think many of us in our country are and it's in value. But sometimes we can overdo it. So we were sitting in our home a few years ago. We were planning our trip to Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So we have done a lot of long distance hiking. This was not a new thing for us. But we were talking about, well, how do we make our weight lighter? Because one of the hiking codes is, if you bring it, you need to carry it. And we were going for seven nights, 79 miles. So no roads to cross, no replenishing of food, so you're carrying everything on your back when you're a backpacker and you're sleeping in the woods. And these were our normal meals, freeze-dried, yum, <laughs> nutritious, but not the tastiest. Also, you can see it's rather bulky. And remember I said it has to fit in here. It all has to fit in here, seven of these dinners. We decided that we would do noodles and something lighter, something tastier. Sounded you like a good idea. Also, as we were planning this trip, we read, it rains a lot in the Smokies. Well, we've faced rain before on the trail. Should be good. We have all our rain gear, waterproof, shoes, and everything else. We were going with four young men that my husband had led in the scouting program, but they were adults now, so it wasn't a scouting trip. We set out in the trail, and I sailed through those first two days. It was great. The third day, I woke up with no energy. So anyone who's ever done a fast or a detox cleanse may be familiar with the concept of, oh, I have no energy, even after sleeping all night. So that day was tough. The third day was tough hiking, and it was going to be a 14-mile day. But I made it. I got into camp at 7 PM, but I did make it. I carried my own weight. Remember I said one of the hiking rules is carry your own weight. It's one of those unwritten rules. But the guys had been asking, well, do you want us to carry some of your weight? And it's like, no, no, I'm good. I've got this. I'm going to do this. I'm determined to go and do this 79 miles myself. The fourth day, I woke up, still no energy. Now, we had figured out much later at home the reason why. Uh, eating about 1,800 calories because of changing our dinners, but burning about 4,000 calories a day mm. is not a great idea. <laughs> the fourth day, I also hit what's called the miseries. So if you're a runner or you know runners, you've heard about them hitting the wall. The miseries is something like that. It's a state of mind, very negative. Why did I come? What am I doing here? This is my vacation. What am I doing here? We were wet because it kept raining. So when I say wet and when I say the Smokies rains a lot, we learned on the trail that it's even considered a mini rainforest in North America, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And to give you a little bit of an idea, my socks were not quite this wet. But about this wet. Wow. And so you have to put these on in the morning, and your shoes are wet as well. So you have an idea of... When I hit the fourth day, and we hit a boulder field that was about three-quarter mile, and the boulders were about this high each, and so that's how this comes to play. This really helps your knees. But I was in that misery stage, and I was just calling out to God, and just quietly inside my head, you know, please help me. Help me. I, I, I want to do this, but I need your help. I had no clear idea of what kind of help I was asking for, but I was just thinking of Psalm 121, and it says, if I lift my eyes to the mountains, where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So it's just keeping on saying, help me. And I heard this voice inside my head, 
I believe it, it was a way that the Lord was speaking to me because I heard, I already gave you your husband and four eagle scouts. Therefore, I started thinking about that. Oh, you've already given me help and I'm not accepting it because I guess I have too much pride. It's okay to accept this kind of help maybe, but maybe not that kind of help in my mind. So I let the guys start carrying some of my weight on that boulder field. And we crested the tallest point in Clingman's Dome, if you're familiar with Great Smoky Mountains. And the trail uh, crosses a road at that point. So it is one point where you could actually get off the trail. No replenishment, but you could get off the trail and find a ranger. But I decided not to drop out of the, out of the hike. The guys didn't want to let me, nor my husband. They said, no, we started this together, we go together, and we finish together, because that is another unwritten hiker's rule. Everybody helps each other, and we must. If someone is without food or water, you share, because it can be a matter of life or death. But I learned that day, in fact, after I didn't drop out, it actually got to be a harder day and the best day at the same time. We encountered a downpour, like a Florida downpour, and so the trail was rushing water that we were walking in. And again, remember I, I told you about the socks and the waterproof shoes, but <laughs> shoes don't stay waterproof in the world if the water comes over the top and comes in from the top. So it was an interesting trip. But during that time, and the thunder and lightning crashing as well during all of that time, I was walking with a young man, Owen, and he was actually carrying my whole pack at that point, because I had let him do that. And I was sharing with him about Psalm 121, calling out to the Lord, and he shared with me, he was 20 years old, and he said, you know, something that I ask the Lord all the time is, I want to be a man. And so I asked him to make me a man, but what I find is that the Lord gives me opportunities to practice being a man rather than making me a man. And so as I'm carrying your backpack and as I'm walking slower with you, this is an opportunity to practice being a man. And so if I had not given up my pride and let someone carry my backpack, he would have missed out on that blessing from the Lord and I would have missed out on seeing it as well. So I think what I learned is you also have to be a gracious receiver, not just a giver, but a gracious receiver as well. Thank you.